it's been about a week or so uh, and I have had a lot of trouble um, with numerous things you know had to get uh, had to get the table cleaned up uh, that's pretty successful got all the uh, got all the rust off um, got it cleaned up uh, got it leveled uh, used a machinist level leveled the uh, machine um, Got the coolant trays in, uh, got coolant in the machine. I, I put all new coolant in uh, and uh, had several leaks back here at uh, my washdown hose connection uh, and then where it goes up into the machine. I had several leaks in this, had to take it apart a few times and fix all the leaks, which is not insignificant because you have to take the entire coolant pump out to spin that guy around just by the way it's designed so you can see down in there the coolant is filled up ready to go um, as I said in in other videos I did have to take the motherboards out send them to uh, fives and they reflash the BIOS um, I also had them supply a new solid-state drive uh, the spinny drive, uh, you know, it's 23 years old and uh, no telling how long that was going to last. So they gave us a, a brand new solid state drive uh, to go with it. Got it all installed and then uh, I figured out that with my new drive, um, the work I had done to install the Ethernet card, uh, that was all gone. So we had to reinstall the Ethernet card, uh, which is not trivial. It's a bunch of work. Um, you have to interrupt the uh, the boot process, uh, get into the uh, to the DOS system, uh, and uh, get that all done. Anyways, uh, Windows NT old stuff, uh, but we are now solid, up and running. Uh, got the machine going. Uh, cut a test part, which you can see right here. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a little uh, thermal heatsink. Um, basically, we're going to pump coolant through these channels and uh, remove a bunch of heat from an instrument. So, I loaded this guy up just to test the process. And what I found was that the machine uh, had some uh, parameters in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the machine itself, the, the controls for the NC and everything, uh, that were not set properly. Uh, like I'm saying, this machine was brand new it has never cut a chip so luckily i have a friend uh jeff voss in michigan who has a few of these machines uh he sent me a screenshot of his parameters and i was able to uh get this thing uh, loaded up properly and get it drilling to the proper depth so now all our parameters are set I have tools in the machine, I've run a test part, I've gone through uh, milling and drilling, uh, tapping, uh, and uh, it looks like we're solid. Uh, so I've spent the past uh, couple weeks actually uh, doing a bunch of design work for, uh, for a new telescope remodel project, um, kind of running up against a deadline for that. So I haven't been able to get out here and do, do much machining, but I've got a little project now. We're going to go ahead and load this in and uh, we'll cut it, we'll cut apart and uh, that's going to be the kind of the culmination of getting this, uh, this new 23 year old machine up and running. Okay, so what you can see here, um, the, uh, the product that we're going to make um, is uh, near and dear. Um, my my wife uh, is heading back to Michigan uh, from Hawaii. Uh, she's heading back to Michigan, and uh, there's going to be a whole get together of the family. And uh, you know, our mom passed away a few years ago, and uh, you know, she was uh, she was cremated, and her ashes were scattered. Uh, but there is no um, there is no actual. Uh, marker monument uh anything that uh the family can can remember uh pat by so um jen's uh my wife's um 
father uh, has has a marker um, in, a, in a very uh, in a very personal space. So what we're going to do is is uh, is make a make a plaque uh, that we can uh, that we can pin to the ground next to next to her father's. Um, so we're going to do we're going to do some pretty good work on this. Uh, you can see it's a uh, it's a bunch of letters on a fairly thick plate. Uh, we didn't have time to source a nice piece of bronze, which we really wanted to do. Um, this kind of came up at the last minute, so we're going to do it out of aluminum, and we're going to we're going to finish it uh, to kind of resemble bronze or kind of antique this a bit. Should be interesting. Uh, but as you can see here. Um, you know, it's about seven by twelve inches, and what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, is cut a chunk of material out and uh, and do some contours around the outside, and then I've got a whole bunch of two uh, D high speed dynamic mill stuff on the inside with rest machining. I think we start with a three eighths, and then we move our way down to. Uh, to I believe we jump right down to a 1 8 inch and then finish up with a 1 16th and then I go in and break the edges with a little tiny uh, quarter inch uh, uh, 45 tool uh, and then um, I think we'll face everything off with a face mill just to uh, make sure we don't have any burrs on anything and then we're off to the hand finishing so that's what this program is I've got everything programmed in um, can show all the tool paths I think there's all the tool paths you can see all the dynamic high speed stuff small step overs 3 8 uh, we're only going 100 thou deep with this uh, but uh, yeah that's what we're gonna make so we got a piece of material cut out uh, I have this uh, this laying around it's three quarters of an inch thick. I think it's uh, 6061 T651 aluminum. Uh, it's like I said, three quarters of an inch thick, about 12 and a half inches long saw cut on the edges. And I, I already threw this in the bridge port and just kind of got two parallel and very flat edges so I can grip it kind of shallow and then come in, do all the work and then uh, flip it and surface off what's left. Uh, hopefully we'll end up with about Five eighths of an inch of material, and then what I have to do is uh, drill a blind hole and tap the backside for a couple of uh, pegs that can uh, be pushed into the ground and mount this guy so it won't, won't disappear on us. So what we'll do is uh, get this mounted in the machine, uh, in the vise, and go from there. All right, so uh, get the uh, get the material kind of sitting in the center of the vise. Of course the vise is aligned and square it. Keep that nice and tight. Go ahead and make sure it's uh, against the parallels. I'm feeling the parallel on this side over here to make sure it's tight. Feels pretty good. Next, we're going to go ahead and mark the surface of this. If you noticed in my uh, in my master cam, I've got the uh, the old point of origin as the center. So what I'll do is just make a make a mark. Showing the center of the of the, of the piece of material. And that should be pretty good. I've got a lot of extra material out here, uh, so anything close to that is going to be just fine. I'll use a drill, a small drill or something to help align that surface. We'll take a skim cut, we'll establish zero, and uh, set that, and we should be good to go. Got the location set. MDI, I've got uh, 
going to go ahead and set X and Y to zero. And that's just a, the cycle start button. Boom, there we go. Now we just set Z and export the programs, import and run. So I've made a couple of cuts and uh, got to the point where it cleaned up the entire surface and then dropped down about two thou, uh, maybe three thou. And we go ahead and MDI and set uh, Z for zero. And again, run, run the, uh, the cycle start. And we turn that to zero. All right. Now we can lift this guy up. So again, we've got X and Y set at the center of the material. We've got Z set so that it will clean up all of this material. And uh, we're going to go ahead and send programs. The only other thing I should know is probably how far I've got from the cleanup edge down to the vise so I don't crash into anything. So what we'll do is uh, set that there and measure that. So, so yeah, I got, I got 650 thou. I've got at least, I got clearance for 5 eighths of an inch. So that's what we'll plan. Okay, I've got the program loaded into the memory, and we're going to go ahead and just say run this program. Oh, by the way, my, my brand new 23-year-old machine, uh, the touchscreen works, which is a rarity in these old machines. So we'll go ahead and say uh, run, that run that program, and we see it pops into the, uh, to the menu down here. And I can, uh, with my scroll keys here, I can just go ahead and scan through that program. See that I've got my three-quarter called up there. Tool three, tool change. We're around 6,000 RPMs clockwise. Uh, and I got coolant coming on right there, M8. I'm staying a quarter inch up, 200 thou up, and then uh, I dive all the way down to 625. And we're gonna cut at 30 inches a minute. Full depth with a three-quarter, three flutes, 6,000. So it's a pretty gentle cut. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to the top and get this started. Now when I press, uh, now when I press uh, cycle start here, uh, one thing that this machine has, these old machines, is uh, it's got a feed override. So I can actually, I think, it doesn't show it right yeah there it does yeah yeah so you can see right there uh, where we are right there I can adjust anywhere from let it run at 100% I can override up to 150 or I can dial it right back down to zero so when I press go I can actually inhibit this thing and run it really slow and check uh, distance to go and make sure that uh, we're not gonna have any crashes so Basically what I'm saying is if you know how to run this machine with these override buttons, you can uh, can almost ensure that you're not going to crash this thing. Okay, I've got the doors shut. We'll go ahead and press uh, cycle start. And again, I've got the feed inhibited. So we can run this over and make sure we're looking right. Comes the coolant, and yeah, everything looks about right. Still, just checking. We'll check out what we got. So we're at uh, 625 depth. That's what it's commanded to go. I like to look at the to-go display. So yeah. Oh. Everything looks good to me. Can't see anything with the coolant, but uh, we're just gonna let this thing eat. Chucking chips like crazy. 
Okay, we got the edges cut and uh, we're gonna go ahead, uh, this guy's roughing out the uh, main pocket size. The, uh, this is a 3 8 This is the uh, 2D, 2D dynamic uh, mill feature in Mastercam. We got a pretty small step over and we're not feeding real fast. Uh, it's still a new machine. I'm kind of being gentle with it. So that little Destiny 3 flute is done with its work and this guy's roughed out. One thing I'm noticing right away from uh, this new machine is my old machine would have never been able to provide surface finish like this. This is just roughing passes, but it's, it is so, so smooth. So yeah, that was the, uh, that was the three eighths. We're going to go ahead and uh, run home for tonight. Got some, got some work to do at home. And then we're going to come in tomorrow and just let this guy eat with a, uh, with a uh, eighth of an inch and then finish up with a 1 16th and then break the corners, flip it and take the material off the back and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, it's out of the machine and uh, everything looks really great. Uh, I don't need to go any smaller than a 16th. Uh, everything's legible. Um, got a lot of tooling marks, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, I don't know what the technique is called. I've done it before on a little sign. Uh, it's going to be pretty extensive on this one because we have so much area. But uh, stippling, I don't know what it's called. Anyways, I've got a punch. It's got a rounded, rounded end. And I'm just going to go ahead and whack a million little dots into this surface. And uh, kind of give it the, uh, the look of cast bronze. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and paint. We'll prime paint and weather this thing so it looks right. So that's the next step. All right, so you can see the results so far. All I did was, uh, you know, I took a, I think this is, what is it, a 330 seconds crappy craftsman punch, and I just, uh, I just rounded over the end of this thing, just to make a ball on the end, basically. And, uh, yeah, all I'm doing is a million hammer strikes all over this thing. It takes a pretty light hammer, <clears throat> and that, uh, that saves your arm, you know, because... It's a lot of hammer strikes. So yeah, I've been working about uh, 15 minutes on this top row up here. Uh, I'll have another 15 in this middle and then, you know, probably 20 in this bottom section down here. So this is a hell of a lot of work, but uh, yeah, you know, the cause is worth it right here. That's it. Uh, this is just is like, you know, geez, 100,000 feels like uh, blows with a hammer. Uh, I've got about uh, an inch and a half square to go. Um, here we go. All right, there we go. Got to have hearing protection for this job. All right. So on the back side, uh, when I surfaced this off, I went ahead and bored a couple of holes and then uh, made some little pins. And we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of just tack these on and then... Uh, when they get on site, they can go ahead and pin this into the ground and it won't want to just fly away. Okay, we're out in the welding shop. Um, 
Got the got the piece set up on uh, something that probably won't burn too much. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, heat this up with a torch. Kind of kind of get uh, get a little bit of heat started into it, and it likes to burn off when you when you heat it up. The torch likes to burn off any any uh, condensation that could could form on the surface when it changes temperature dramatically. So we'll do that, and then we'll get after it with the Dynasty 300. Uh, pretty basic stuff. Okay, I've got a little uh, 16th rod right here. I think it's, uh, I don't know, geez, what is it, 4043 16th rod. Uh, I've got my tungsten, uh, nice and sharp, ready to go. Uh, got me a little torch, and uh, let's see if it'll, see if it'll work. There we go. You can see instantly there's all kinds of uh, condensation forming on the surface. As you get a little heat in it, it just kind of goes away. Okay, we'll get the welder fired up and see what we can do. My, uh, my gloves are terrible. I need some new gloves, so I'm just going to set them right here and make this happen. I think I'm, I got about a 200 amps of power in this thing. Turn it down to 190 or so. It's thick material, and I'm only going to go part of a pedal anyways, but uh, yeah, here we go. There's a little tack there. It only needs to be tacked in. Uh, mostly I'm thinking if they decide to do something different with this, once they're on site, uh, they'll be able to, uh, to bust these tacks loose, knock these pins off, and uh, you know, kind of do what they want to do, whether they screw it to a tree or who knows. But uh, I, we're, we're designing it to uh, go into the ground pin right into the ground. So I'll just throw a tack on this other side. Two tacks per side. 
and uh, that's it. So this guy's pretty hot. Take, it, take the gloves to get her off. Anyway, yeah, my helmet I use is really nice. I don't know uh, if anybody comes across this guy. My kids got me this for uh, for a Christmas gift. It's uh, it's Chinese. T R U S O X I N. And uh, you know what? It's actually pretty decent. I think it came off Amazon. Auto dimming. It's got a big field of view and uh, came with a bunch of spares, uh, you know, lenses. Uh, it's a pretty good gig. I like it. Anyway, there you go.